Oh, good. My heroin dealer is here. Never heard of Virgo. Here, 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 here. The mag, 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 the mag. Thank you for website. It's 1984, and I own two Hollywood video franchises. I want a 5 Series BMW, but I don't want to drive one of them fern cars. I also want good mileage. I also want it to drive like a waterbed filled with Ovaltine and whole milk. I also want people to think I signed checks with a Mont Blanc. And I want the car to accelerate slower than a heating oil truck. Hello, 1984 Lincoln Continental Turbo Diesel. I know it's a BMW engine, but don't worry. We'll put fur on the engine so you'll never know. This Continental offers the four-speed BMW HP22 transmission manufactured by ZF. It's an all-BMW drivetrain, and that's how this car came from the factory. It's got 373 rear gearing, and it's still slow, and a 2.4-liter M21 turbo diesel engine, which makes around 114 horsepower and 155 pound-feet of torque. The turbo peaks at about 13 PSI, or around thereabouts, because at 14 PSI, it would pop the overboost relief. As of filming, this car sits at 195,742 miles. Thane, the owner, bought this off of a friend for $750, but it needed the works to be roadworthy again. New timing belt, water pump, radiator, brake system, ball joint, studs, sock, shocks, tires, belt tensioner, and I think that's about it. Thane pretty much took this back to stock, if as close as he could. And what he got in the bargain was a really slow car. It goes in positions that are just totally useless. Yeah, it's like, I was expecting the whole column to move. It's no, no. it's just literally the <laughs> no. wheel. It'd be a lot more useful if the entire column moved. So if you're big, you're gonna be driving like that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we got space. Like school bus style. Yeah. All right, go baby, go. This is foot on the floor. There's That's 30. All. That's all she's got. There's shit. <laughs> There's. Are we in top gear? Is there no, three or four speeds? Four. That's fourth. All right. Wow. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Yeah, you can't be in a hurry. Who bought drive. this? I don't know. Who would buy this piece of shit? Somebody that didn't want to pay fuel because it gets well, okay. good fuel mileage. Yeah. You want. Uh, here comes a Corolla. Oh, yeah. Come on, will you oh, please you do at, 50 you miles an hour? K cars in this. Again, even with 373 gearing, it's a slug. It's a Fox platform, you know, kind of like a Fairmont, but with a bunch of bells and whistles, except the bells have no clapper, and the whistle is on a frequency that only golfers with a net score of plus six can hear. Yes, it's got a turbo. Nope, still not fast. Doesn't handle particularly well either. It's like driving a roll of wet toilet paper. It accelerates like a water balloon filled with peanut butter. It's slower than the internet connection at your parents' house after you moved out. It's slower than the development on that Mallrats sequel. It's a car for people whose kids grow up not respecting escalators. I've passed kidney stones in the time it takes for this thing to hit 60. But that weakness is also kind of a strength, because while it takes some time to get up to speed, it's basically impossible to drive like an asshole in this thing. It will get to 70 eventually, and you get to be pleased because you're driving a Lincoln Continental. But who takes anybody seriously in a Conti? This is as far from the original conception of the Continental as modern Continentals are from this. You can make the argument that the Continental fathered the mass market USDM personal luxury market, but for its seventh generation, it went midsize. Yet the Mark 7 diesel was not all that successful, because I don't think anybody viewed Continentals as cars that necessarily demanded having a diesel engine. Sure, the BMW powertrain was a shot at similar diesel offerings by its competitors, with the ad campaign even declaring... Mercedes now has something it hasn't had before. Competition! 
which is a whole ass lie. But regardless of the marketing, this was simply the wrong car for the wrong time. Because on the other side of the fence, General Motors had pretty, pretty much screwed up diesel engines for everybody when they de-emphasized their own very good Chevy 350 in, in, in favor of a diesel variant way before the American public was ready to accept it. Okay, maybe it wasn't the whole reason. This is a theory. But you could see how GM could think that fuel economy would be paramount in the aftermath of the 70s oil crisis, especially with the new government fuel economy regulations. And while that was the case, their diesel V8 didn't really pan out in the way GM wanted it to. The General Motors diesel conversions were unreliable and costly to maintain, and generally more trouble than the effort was worth. Ford witnessed all of this and decided it would be better, rather than building a bunch of small block diesels in-house, they outsourced the whole project to BMW, who had, of course, better success in this area back home. But the problem was that while this did get a very serviceable 24 miles per gallon combined at launch, this just wasn't the car people wanted. Ford only made around 1,500 diesel variants of the Continental before the car was discontinued in 1985. And yet this car, this car is endures despite all its failures. The Continental Mark was discontinued after the 2020 model year, which sounds sad until you consider this will be the fourth time the Continental has been killed. So history tells you it'll probably be back again in some form, even though you can't really compare the modern Continentals to this one. Continentals mean different things in different times. I mean, even Kid Rock once rapped about having the Lincoln Continental and a Grand Marquis. I don't know what that really means. Okay, you have affordable, middle-class luxury cars. I guess the general thesis of the Continental is that it is class and fanciness. This is from a period in which Lincoln lost its populist luxury mojo and sought to make up the difference with beep boops and looky lights on the interior. Computer regulated air springs, dual intensity, reading lamps for extra motion sickness. Technolo technology is a band aid on a missing limb. There's such a, there's a huge feeling of, of, of eye rolling and a, and a big sigh and a shoulder shrug energy to it. Like Lincoln felt that this is a car that they had to make because they had to make it. The aesthetic tries to convince you it's fancy, but it's fancy like crumpled dollar bills carpeting a hardwood stage while quiet riot echoes off the walls and blends with the sad shuffling of the lunchtime lap dance crowd. It's fancy like a steak prepared medium well. This car is a salon magazine's idea of what an adult haircut looks like. The steering wheel looks like a frowning Union General. Lincoln Continental Turbo Diesel. Sponsored by a country club member who's never had his bluff called. Where are the cheap used cars, I hear you? Everything is expensive and woe is me. Here's one. Here's a cheap car. A fattened Fox body platform for 750 bucks. Big fake chrome switches, genuine maybe leather, liquid crystal display, which to me is cool. The camera doesn't accurately represent how bright and crisp these numbers are. And as bad as I've been ripping on this Lincoln and will continue to, the digital display is very pleasing to the eye. The ride is as gentle as Hershey Park's Trailblazer. Riding in this, I feel like I threw up in the recess line and now grandma is driving me to her house at 11.25 a.m. because both parents are at work. Still, better steering than a 1999 Bravada. Do you want one of these? You want to own one? Well, you're going to have to rebuild the injection pump. The reseal kit is like 35 bucks, but the labor to do it is 1,500 because the process is more tedious than building a calculator in Minecraft. The turbo is so tiny and I can't feel its spool. 
Thane said he drove this with the wastegate stuck open and it felt like he was running on three cylinders. So the turbo is the only thing keeping this diesel six alive, like a shriveled bane in Batman Beyond. The accelerator pedal is super heavy because there's all these springs in here. Unless your grandma is a through hiker or does calf extensions, She's only pushing this skinny pedal down 25% and then going 35 miles an hour up the Frackville grade. Rolling in a Conti turbo diesel is like wearing a 1950s snapback that says DDT is for me. And all your friends who are too cool to ever smile say, that's hot. If your vibe is a precisely arranged diorama of not giving a f then a turbo diesel Conti will complete your look. All you need is a cum and diff oil stained white t-shirt that says OBGYN doctor and you're ready to stop every conversation at the barbecue. I'm a, D I'm a DGAF guy, and that's my personality now. I'm 31, and all my friends are buying houses and planning for the future, and I'm here throwing up the horns while shitting in a mattress firm. But becoming a 41-year-old DGAF guy, or a 51-year-old DGAF guy, is not a life plan. Flipping off the camera in every photo taken of you, is not a personality. Even Tim Armstrong mellowed out. We all wear our cars like clothes. And wealth is its own tuxedo. But the appearance of wealth gets your foot through the door, but you don't have to have the responsibility of knowing what a money market account does. You're like a man with a clipboard and a reflective vest. You look like you know what you're doing, but it's social tourism. It's like seeing how the other half lives and pretending you've always lived that way. You've always been in the club. And if you live that lie long enough, either of high class or low class, you run the risk of convincing yourself that your privilege oppresses you or your lifestyle oppresses you. As if the world is unfair to you. You in particular, unfair to you alone, that the ordered system of a functioning society cares enough about the individual to single them out. And a Lincoln Continental shouldn't be important enough to make you feel that way. No car should be. Listen to me. Or else you're going to be that old man at the Appalachian Trail hiking shelter telling stories about his youth that never happened. My other car's a Lincoln I said my other car's a Lincoln With a bumper sticker that says My other car's yours